Welcome to the Village Shops, Ruskin, Florida, DWI Right Now, episode 46. And we are kicking things off with DWI original Anthony Devlin. Anthony Devlin has been with the promotion since DWI volume one. This is DWI volume 210. Former tag team champion with Aaron Nova. martial arts expertise one of the best high flyers DWI has to offer and as you can hear Anthony Devlin fan favorite and who is he squaring off with today in the opening contest of DWI right now episode 46 and his opponent here we go, who could this be? And we have one half of the DWI Tag Team Champions, the Fleshmaster, accompanied to the ring by the injured Charles Crane, and this is one of Anthony Devlin's arch nemesis here at DWI. They have squared off multiple times, including both tag team tournaments, reaching the finals. And this is gonna be a hard hitting action packed matchup to kick things off here. These two have battled so many times. I was a part of some of those epic battles. What an opening contest. You can get action like this for only $5 every other Sunday at the Village Shops in Ruskin, Florida. And it looks like we are about to kick things off here. The sadistic flesh master, one of the hardest hitting competitors in DWI against Anthony Devlin, DWI original, high flyer, martial arts expert. And the ref signals for the bell, and we are underway. Opening contest. Both men squaring off. Collar and elbow tie up. Anthony Devlin right into the wrist lock. Right into the top wrist lock. And Anthony Devlin with the early advantage here. Rolls the flesh mask through right into that arm bar. Has the knee right on his head for leverage to inflict more pain. Fleshmaster going for that arm drag, but Anthony Devin held on, turned into an arm drag of his own, and he's still in control. And you hear Charles Crane at ringside, back and forth with the fans. And Tony Devlin rolling through. What a reversal. Fireman's carry takeover. And he has him in a submission predicament here. And what, what a counter right into that dragon sleeper from Anthony Devlin. And these two men know each other so well, squared off in the ring so many times here at Definitive Wrestling International. This huge snapmare from the Flesh Master. The 
Jeff's right there making sure that those shoulders aren't down, which they're dangerously close. Anthony Devlin doing everything he can. Head scissors. And both men countering everything. But Anthony Devlin finding himself in control once again. Fleshmaster trying to work his way out. Rolls through. Now he has the headlock. Tony trying desperately to get back to his feet. And another reversal right into that front face lock. And this could be it right here. He is choking the life out of him. But the Fleshmaster, using that size and strength advantage, lifts Tony Devlin from off the mat. But he can't escape as the auction is being cut off. Front face lock takeover. He kicks out, but Anthony Devlin maintains the submission maneuver. Fleshmaster has to escape here. He's going to be choked out. Encounters it with that drop toe hold. What a hard hitting contest here. DWI volume 210. And Anthony Devlin barely getting his shoulders up at the count of two. Charles Crane complaining about the officiating. For some reason, it seems like no matter what the official does, Charles Crane has a complaint about it. And now the flesh master with the front face lock on Anthony Devlin. Anthony Devlin trying to battle out of this. And he hits him with a Northern Light suplex. And just think you can get incredible action like this every two weeks in the village shops in Ruskin, Florida. Fleshmaster desperately trying to make his way to his feet. Sweeps Anthony Devlin down. And no matter what's happened, each man has a counter for the other. And he's looking to break that ankle and leg. Drops the elbow. And Anthony Devlin using his foot to choke him out. What an impressive submission here. With the Fleshmaster battling, punching that knee. And Anthony Devlin trying to make it to the ropes desperately. And this could spell disaster for Anthony Devlin. As the Fleshmaster is trying to hyperextend that knee, dislocate that ankle. And what a kick right to the chest. Anthony Devlin known for the signature martial arts kicks, but the flesh master with the coconut crunch using his head as a weapon. And Devlin could be unconscious here after that huge headbutt. And Anthony Devlin eats the turnbuckle. Fleshmaster goes to the proverbial well one too many times. Anthony Devlin trying to battle out with the reversal punches him right in the face. Tony Devlin filer in all cylinders, shoots him off the ropes and just levels him, putting everything into that big clothesline. And Anthony Devlin could win it here. One, two, only a two count. Anthony Devlin with the monkey flip right back into the pinning predicament. And Anthony Devlin just ate the turnbuckle. Fleshmaster grabbed his tights and threw him face first and he could be unconscious here. Did you see how he fell? But now the Fleshmaster just choking the life out of Anthony Devlin. Anthony Devlin is in trouble here. The refs turned around. Charles Crane. Just punching, choking Anthony Devlin. Ref, turn around. And the numbers game coming into effect here. Charles Crane, Fleshmaster, Anthony Devlin, no strangers. And that leg drop right to the lower midsection. 
And how did Anthony Devlin kick out of that after being choked with the crush, punched on the outside, leg drops. Anthony Devlin on spaghetti legs right here. Everything he has in him to reverse that. Big back body drop. And Anthony Devlin trying to turn things around here in the opening contest. Leg lariat. Huge jumping elbow drop. Hooks the leg. But only a two count. Come on. The light heavyweight division is on showcase in this matchup. Two of the best light heavyweights. Knife edge chop from Anthony Devlin. And the Fleshmaster turning things around here. Fleshmaster known for liking those chops. And it looks like he's going for his signature. Fleshmaster double underhook suplex. We've seen him take out the competition with that move. It's signature Fleshmaster right there. And how did Anthony Devlin kick out of that? And Charles Crane up on the ring apron. Obviously not happy. They thought that was it. And Charles Crane, he just hit the ref in the back of the head. The, ref, the ref's unconscious. What's going on here? And Charles Crane in the ring. Anthony Devlin is in trouble here. Charles Crane lining up with the crutch. Anthony Devlin out of the way. Charles Crane strikes the flesh master. And that backfired for the sinful alliance right there. The ref is down. Anthony Devlin regrouping here. And Anthony Devlin wakes the referee up after being hit in the head with that crutch. Irish, is this it? BKOD. That has got to be it. And Anthony Devlin overcame the odds right there. BKOD on the Fleshmaster after Charles Crane's interference. And here is your winner, DWI Original. Former Tag Team Champion, former DWI Light Heavyweight Champion, Anthony Devlin. And the Fleshmaster highly upset with Charles Crane. Your winner, once again, Anthony Devlin, DWI. Right now, episode 46. What an opening contest. The Sinful Alliance tried to play the numbers game, but it backfired. They're arguing at ringside, but Anthony Devlin celebrates an impressive victory here at DWI, volume 210. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, this is Anthony Devlin. I'm really excited because I'm coming off of a victory myself. And this is DWI right now, episode 46, volume 210. And that is Tank, Nick Abrams. Like I said, I'm Anthony Devlin alongside my boy. Alex Green. And we are kicking things off with the graduate of the Academy of Wrestling Sciences, the Tank, Nick Abrams. The Tank, Nick Abrams. Nah, coming along very nicely these days. You know, work in progress, but definitely got a big chip on his shoulder. What his wrestling in-ring lacks, that chip more than makes up for. Not to mention the impressive physique of the tank, Nick Abrams. The man looks like he does a thousand and two squats a day. Or to the fans here at the Village Shops, butt pads. Butt pads. Talking garbage to the DWI fans here, as per usual. Nick wasn't always like that, though. He used to, you know, really go out there for the fans. But over the last year, we've seen this metamorphosis, more of a cocky, arrogant, egotistical Nick Abrams, more worried about his hair than his opponent. I think what we're seeing is the real Nick Abrams. I think everything that we saw leading up to this was just the facade. It's what he wanted people to see what he wanted people to think about him. And you know, time is the only real test. Time tells all. That's right. 
And who is he going to square off against in this second contest of DWI right now, episode 46? Oh my gosh, I'm not sure, but I sure am excited to find out who is it going to be here. Uh-oh. You uh -oh. know that music. I know that music. I think everybody out there knows that music. That is the music of the monster siren herself. And when she is at, usually the monster is in tow. Seven foot tall, near 400 pound wrecking machine. That is the monster. A former DWI heavyweight champion and one of the biggest athletes on the planet. Seven foot tall, 385 pounds, and the reputation is human wrecking machine monster. I saw him rope somebody's toe off just by stepping onto them and removing their body from where he stood. It's a true story. And this is a bad day to be the tank, Nick Abrams. Squaring off against one of the biggest athletes in the world. And like you said, he can literally rip you limb from limb, and you have witnessed him do this. What'd you get in there? And it looks like Nick Abrams is questioning his life decisions already as he finds himself in the squared circle. With I said wrapping off at the fans. It's easier to talk smack to a female fan than it is to get in there and face the monster. And senior referee Ray Riviera is going to have his hands full in this matchup. You have Siren at ringside. Look at that. Monster just scared him all the way out of the ring. He's going to check Monster for weapons. And there you go, Monster stating, I don't need weapons. And you just, you cannot imagine how big Monster is until you see him live. Wow, that's true. Nick Abrams, quite the large individual himself, looking like a little boy next to him. Mocking the tank, or the tank mocking Monster, by the way. Not the best decision. No. The monster Siren coming into her own herself as of late. Been coming out with the monster. Becoming more vocal as you could hear, talking about how the monster is going to be eating the tank for dinner. And she has taken disliking to the tank. Well, the tank is quite misogynist. You know, telling her she needs to be in the kitchen cooking and this is not a place for women. And if you were in the tank, Nick Abrams' shoes right now, what would be your strategy to win this match, Tony? Move as fast as I possibly can. Stay away from the monster. Yes. And that looks like exactly what he is trying to do. Nick Abrams has gotten under the skin of the monster as of late. You're the one that's cooking it. There he goes, referring back to that cooking and in the kitchen. And Monster looking to lock horns here, but Nick Abrams having hey, none of it. And you can hear the Monster chicken. The unfortunate thing is a lot of the Monsters matches begin this way with people just running away from trying to tire him out. And I think that because of this, he's in much better cardiovascular shape than people think. <laughs> I mean, they're steady running from him, so. And eventually he catches them, so it seems to me that he's in better shape than most of them. And he almost caught the tank, Nick Abrams, right there. He just barely escaped. Monster had his hand on the back of his head. And the fans growing antsy with Nick Abrams' tactics, Siren growing antsy, and Monster seems to be getting angry. Well, there you go. Uh, grab him by the head and just hum chucks him into the ring over the top rope, boot to the small of the back, sending him flying across the ring. Nick Abrams is in trouble here. Not his hair. He's worried about his hair as he's being choked against the ropes. My hair. He's worried about his hair. 
as he's getting the life choked out of him by a monster and sirens embarrassing him. He's like, my hair, my hair. I spent so long on my hair. And he hits it. He hits my hair. You like that pretty face there? And monster just giving the business to the young Nick Abrams. I'm messing up his pretty face as he refers to. And this is going to be a long ride down. Goops him up. Going down. And that cannot feel good. Falling from over seven feet in the air. Splat. And the fans appreciative of that scoop slam. Nick Abrams, a 230-pound solid man himself, hitting that canvas. And the tank, Nick Abrams, is in trouble here. Come on. Trying to fight back. Oh my goodness. And that's why they call him the human wrecking machine as he is just wrecking Nick Abrams here at as TWI Volume 210. As you referred to earlier, definitely second guessing his life choices. And Siren seems to be enjoying Nick Abrams taking this beating. And he's just going to squeeze his head right off right here. Monster just embarrassing the tank, Nick Abrams, here, giving him a noogie. He's treating him like a child. It's pandemonium here at the Village Shops in Ruskin, Florida. Exactly, making him look like a giant idiot. Nick Abrams highly upset. Nick tried to get away. Oh, well, no. That did not work out at all, did it? Not at all. Monster could have just broke his leg right there. That was a big ass leg drop, if I may say so myself. It doesn't get any bigger than that. I'm glad that was Nick and not me, that's for sure. Monster sends Nick Abrams to the right. Huge hip toss. There's not a bigger hip toss in the business, Tony. The tank is going to be decommissioned after this. Monster has just been putting the beating on Nick here in this matchup. Nick has had no offense whatsoever. But Nick Abrams out of the way. Nick trying to turn things around here. That's two big clotheslines. Monster having none of that when he hits him with a huge sidewalk slam. He went for that third clothesline. Monster just drops him down. 385 pounds right on his chest. He lowered him to a saw. Not at all what he thought was going to be. And this matchup is going to be over soon. Nick has been taking quite the beating. Trying to deliver those shots to the midsection. I don't think they're having any effect at all. Oh, jeez, Louise. The fact that Nick is still fighting is superhuman. I mean, think about the beating he has been taking. The monster still just embarrassing Nick Abrams. Come on, huh? He's messing my hair up. He's more worried about his hair. He needs to stop worrying about his hair and worry about trying to beat the monster. And this is the definition of in-your-face action. His ego writing checks his ass can't cash. What is he doing there? What's he going? What, what is he doing? He is exposed the turnbuckle, but the ref doesn't see it. Monster doesn't see it. And my ears are not a toilet for your potty mouth, Tony. What did I say? Monster from across the ring. Oh, my goodness. Oh, right in the sternum. He hit that exposed turnbuckle. Oh, my. And the low blow off the ropes. Head of steam. That's the, that's the signature spear from Nick Abrams. There is no way he is going to win this match. Yelling for the monster to get up. I cannot believe what I'm witnessing here. Monster is reeling. Nick Abrams calling for the monster to get all that strength to get him up. Gets him up for the big Samoan drop. And 
the tank. Nick Abrams goes for the pin. Feet are on the ropes. Siren tries to get them off, but to no avail, he gets the victory. He used every trick right there to get the victory over the monster. And yet again, Nick Abrams, the tank, reeling off a victory over the seven foot monster. That's like twice in a row now. I cannot believe what we just witnessed at DWI Volume 210. What is going on? I can't believe the first victory he got. Now he's got like two in a row. Is that two, three in a row? What's going on? I don't on? know, but he exposed the turnbuckle. He hit him with the low blow. He hit him with the spear and the Samoan drop and he picks up the huge upset and this has to catapult what's, Nick Abrams' career. What's going on? I mean, the monster, he if he didn't want to get his hands on him at the beginning of this match, and yet again, underhanded tactics, he resorts to them to beat the monster. Nick Abrams better be looking over his shoulder because he is having an angry, seven foot tall, human wrecking machine chasing him. He is doing everything it takes to get noticed, but it just might cost him his life. And it's time for our third hard-hitting contest on this episode of DWI right now. I'm Alex Green. I'm Anthony Devlin, and this here match should be a good one. Featuring your DWI light heavyweight champion, Corey Kreese. Taking on the graduate of the Academy of Wrestling Sciences, the Apache assassin, Solomon Stone. Clearly this is not for the title. This is a straight up match, but uh, good lipnit test for Solomon Stone going up against one of DWI's champions here today. And Corey Kreese has been on a roll since he debuted, and can he continue it here at DWI Volume 210? Takes Solomon Stone over with that arm drag. Another big arm drag, and Corey Kreese with the experience and control in this matchup. Stole the words right out of my mouth. And this is a different test for Corey Kreese. He's been taking on the top talent in the light heavyweight division. He's moving up in weight in this match here, moving up in weight and size. The experience not on the side of Solomon Stone, as you stated already, but the it, size and the strength. Appearance at DWI for Solomon Stone. Uh, size and strength, maybe not in height, but definitely in uh, the bulk department. Well, and he does all kinds of stuff, including those elbows and that mohawk. Well, you know, when you do all kinds of stuff, you're definitely in for a great career, I think. Solomon Stone just attacking the shoulder and elbow on the current DWI Light Heavyweight Champion, Corey Kreese. And Solomon Stone has been nothing short of impressive since debuting in the first ever DWI Rumble. Yeah, he has had some unfortunate uh, outcomes in some matches yeah, to be expected in the beginning. But looking impressive in every single one of those outings. Not looking impressive there as Corey Kreese just blasted him with that drop kick. Fans yelling out for Corey. Definitely has them in there, his uh, corner there. And forearms and kicks from the light heavyweight champion. Corey Kreese all the way across the ring. And that signature flying back elbow. Solomon Stone's in trouble here. And a penalty kick right to the spine. And these two right here, these are two of the hottest up and comers in DWI. Corey Kreese goes for the lateral press, hooks the leg, but only a two count. And Solomon Stone going to the underhanded tactics, raking the eyes of Corey Kreese here. And then just unleashing on Corey Kreese, knees, boots. And Solomon Stone showing us a vicious side here on episode 46. 
Ripping him out of the corner and dropping him right in the back of his bean. Solomon Stone. Firm control, dropping that elbow right there in the midsection of the champ. Beautiful elbow right to the sternum of Corey Crease and that 250 pound frame landing right on top of him. The light heavyweight champ definitely in trouble here right now. That size difference, I think a little much right now. Scoops him up. Bam! Delivers him right down on the mat. Off the ropes. And that's the all kinds of stuff leg drop. And he thinks that lackadaisical cover there. He thought he had it won. I don't know so much that it was lackadaisical. He was pushing right down on the sternum of trying to push the air out. Not good. He, easy to kick out, but trying to inflict pain on him while stomping him right there. Crease fighting back with those punches and the kick. Spinning back kick to the gut of the Assassin shoots him off into the corner. Comes in with the clothesline. Corey Kreese showing why he's the light heavyweight champion. Oh. Solomon Stone with the reversal. Big splash in the corner. Calling for another one. And he eats the boot. Showing that inexperience for sure there. Telegraphing the move. Goes taking too much again. time. Oh my goodness, right in the bicuspids. The super kick. And oh, Solomon Stone under the down. jaw, lifted his chin right up, dropped him. And Corey Kreese is sending the ropes here at the village shops. Huge splash and that's got to be it. Solomon Stone kicking out at two. Only a two count. But Corey Kreese using his body as a weapon to try to put Solomon Stone away. Pulling out all stops right there, but nothing worked. Looking pretty much out of it, not knowing what it's going to take. The fans trying to energize him here. Both men trying to climb to their feet here. Solomon Stone needed the gut. Hoist Corey Crease up in the air. And that is Solomon Stone's finisher. That has got to be it. But Corey Crease just barely gets his shoulder up. And I can't believe he kicked out of that one, Tony. Unbelievable. That vicious the gut buster. fortitude. In the fortitude of the champ. Solomon Stone looking to put it away here. DWI volume 210. Corey Creese eating that turnbuckle. Solomon Stone flying off the ropes. Huge shoulder tackle. Solomon Stone has been putting it all on the line. We're seeing all kinds of maneuvers. We Vaughn darted him into the top turnbuckle. Yeah, we do all kinds of stuff. That diving clothesline, now we're just stomping to the midsection. Now you got me saying it. <laughs> Referee admonishing him there for that choke. Calling for the end. Scoops him up. Solomon Stone looking to pick up a victory on a champion, but Corey Kreese lands on his feet. Kick to the gut, big, big forearms. Puts him into the rope, shoots him off, big reversal. And that's signature Corey Kreese right there. That running knee, that's gotta be it, he's unconscious. Oh my goodness, Corey Kreese. He just picked up an impressive victory over the larger Solomon Stone, and Corey Kreese. Representing the light heavyweight division here at DWI, the champ wrapping off that victory against the bigger Solomon Stone. Corey Kreese has been impressive and he continues to be on a roll, picking up another victory at DWI volume 210. DWI right now, episode 46, it's pandemonium. The champ is looking a little tired. He sure did fight, what the hell? Solomon man, Stone from behind. Dude, Yo man, ho Yo, hold on man. Solomon Stone obviously frustrated after losing the match against Corey Yo, Kreese. hold up, man. I, I can't take this. Hold on, man. Anthony Devlin has left the booth. Solomon Stone has hit the ropes. And a huge splash. Solomon Stone just taking out his frustration on Corey Anthony Devlin enters the ring. 
Anthony Devlin coming to the aid of Corey Kreese and putting the beat down on Solomon Stone. The ref's ringing the bell. He's trying to stop this. This matchup's over. Corey Kreese is your winner. Solomon Stone stent for the ride. And Solomon Stone taking the beat down. Anthony Devlin coming to the aid of Corey Kreese. And your winner, the DWI light heavyweight champion, Corey Kreese. And he's got to be thinking that Anthony Devlin was there because Solomon Stone was putting the beat down on him. Anthony Devlin comes to the ring to make the save. What a hard hitting matchup. DWI Wrestling established 2009. Check us out, Facebook.com slash DWI Wrestling. What a matchup. And it is main event time of DWI right now, episode 46. Alex Green in the booth. Yo, 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 Anthony Devlin. We are main eventing. We got Lightning Monroe. A DWI original. Seasoned veteran here. Former DWI tag team champion. The human sweater. One half of the Rebel Gorillas with David Guevara. Lightning Monroe known for his underhanded tactics and all, you know, any means necessary approach to wrestling matches. This guy can run his mouth. Blow you into a boring sleep and then punch you in the face. And then all of a sudden, the victory and go home. Yeah, you're like, what happened? And Lightning Monroe has told all of us multiple times that he is the best wrestler. He is the best looking wrestler. He is the best competitor in Definitive Wrestling International. Lightning Monroe is also the only DWI wrestler that comes with a disclaimer. Which is exactly what they're saying right now. His opinions and views are not shit. Those shared by Definitive, <laughs> yeah. Definitive Wrestling International. And who's next in this matchup? Darkest corner of his mother's basement. And straight out of his mom's basement, it's the Iceman, Ian Frost, returning to the village shops in Ruskin, Florida. A perfect hot mess, if I do say so myself. Perfection. Perfection. And what is going on? It's pandemonium at the village shops in Ruskin, Florida. I don't know about pandemonium. But that was pandemonium. I bet you that guy in the crowd's a rapper or something. And the Ice Man feeling himself better than everybody. Better than the cameraman, better than all the fans, better than the referee, better than Lightning Monroe. Well, sometimes you just need confidence. When you is he overcompensating? I don't know. He's got the hips in the midsection of a 30-year-old mother of two. <laughs> this is an interesting match. We have Lightning Monroe. Now we have Ian Frost, and neither one of these competitors know how to shut their mouth. This might be the least attractive match DWI has ever booked, and Rick Roberts used to be on our show. I love Rick Roberts though. The most chiseled abdominal region ever. Who doesn't love hard body Rick Roberts? Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is set for one ball. And it looks like we're gonna have a third competitor in this matchup. I think we forgot something. Introducing next from the Bronx, New York. Oh, a fan favorite here. And my former tag team partner. And the fans erupt as the captain, Aaron Nova, makes his way to the ring. I don't hear 
in the main event, DWI right now, episode 46. All right, my money's on the captain. And just think, Tony, you can get action like this every two weeks, Village Shops, Ruskin, Florida, for only $5. It's unbelievable. The Nova is fired up. Clearly the fan favorite in this matchup. But he is also the smallest competitor. Smallest competitor in this matchup. And both men threatening the swagtastic super thug. Oh my God, it's a good thing it's a big building because the munch of the garbage that they're talking is taking up all of the air. Ian cheering for himself in the ring. And the DWI faithful clearly behind the captain, Aaron Nova. Absolutely no doubt about who they're for here. If he moves as quick as his mouth does, I think Nova is in trouble. I already can tell you that he's up against it. Lightning Monroe is definitely going to try to go after Nova. I know this. You've got to know this. The fans cheering for Nova. Ian Frost, Lightning Monroe getting under the skin of the fans. Ian Frost deceptively large. And it looks like Lightning Monroe and Ian Frost are kind of uh, trying to come up with a little bit of an agreement here. Oh, uh, I, you, I told, you just, yeah, yeah. That's what I was saying. And Nova there it better is. look out. We are underway, triple threat action. Ian and Frost. Bang. Lightning Ian Monroe. Frost beat, beat Lightning Monroe to it. Oh my goodness. They just spiked Aaron over. He is in trouble in this triple threat matchup. But it's two on one assault to kick things off in this huge main event. Oh. Stomping him. Drumming that big forearm just leveling Aaron Nova. And I don't think Lightning Monroe or Ian Frost's mouths have stopped since they walked through that curtain. No. Ian's talking, Lightning Monroe's attacking. Delivering that shoulder into the sternum of Nova while laying in the corner. Nova already in big trouble. It's like they just want to beat him up. They're mad that the crowd like him. And a knife edge top from Ian Frost. They're jealous of Nova's connection with the fans here and they want to take it out on them and they're also they seem like they're bullies they enjoy this two-on-one assault if i was as ugly as them i'd want to hang out in my mom's basement and not let anybody see my face either and nova's doing everything he can here just to get to his feet and every time he stands up there's a full-grown right man they're high-fiving each other they're happy for themselves but Aaron nova climbing to the top Oh, big cross body taking out both competitors there. And Aaron Nova off the ropes here. Hard to believe. Oh, drops that knee on him. Hard to believe Aaron Nova was once deathly afraid of heights. And Raining all... down, just stomping him, double stomping him. And they've made Aaron Nova mad. The two-on-one assault. Now he is firing on all cylinders, and he put the beat down on Ian Frost right here. He collected his bearings. They let him sit around too much. Oh, elbow into the midsection. Throws Aaron Nova in there. Ian Frost Far all the way across the ring. Oh. Aaron Nova catches him. Oh, knee breaker. He could have dislocated or hyperextended his knee there, and that could be it for Ian Frost. What an impressive maneuver from the captain. He thought he was gonna be able to manhandle him and use that size difference, but oh no. Deflected that leg going up, gives him the knee breaker. And Aaron Nova smartly taking out the leg of the much bigger competitor. There you go. 
And look at that submission. Ian Frost is in trouble. And Lightning Monroe is just still regrouping on their outside, letting this happen. Something happened with Ian Frost and him, and he is not happy. Ian Frost being turned into a pretzel live at the Village Shops in Ruskin, Florida. Aranova once again oh, just attacking. flipping over them. That, that's got to be it. Hyper extending that knee and pulling the <laughs> And Ian Frost in obvious pain. Do you see that, Tony? Oh. And Aranova has really taken control of this matchup. And he just got spine bustered out of nowhere. And Lightning and Row picking his spots, coming in to help break up the pinfall and trying, attacking Ian Frost. Trying to pick the bones of Aaron Nova like a vulture. Ian Frost thrown to the floor. Little insult to injury after delivering the slam rubbing the bottom of his boots on the forehead of Aaron Nova. What a hard hitting triple threat match here at DWI volume 210. I certainly feel bad for my old partner Aaron Nova. He is up against it in this match. That is for certain. Lightning Monroe just hitting him with that leg drop and now just taunting and disrespecting the Swagtastic Super Thug. You know, usually I don't like to hear the voice of Lightning Monroe, but at this point, I want him to keep talking, giving Aaron a chance to come back, collect himself, summon some of that intestinal fortitude. Lightning Monroe all the way across the ring. Lightning Bolt charge. Misses. Two. Oh oh no, Aaron almost Nova gets him. Al almost stole a victory right there. Oh, he was trying to come back and got taken right out. Aaron Nova gets clotheslined almost out of his boots. Lightning and Roy hoisting Aaron Nova up into the air. He's got him up on his shoulder. This is a very dangerous place to be. Huge Samoan drop and that has got to be it. That was beautiful. And Aaron Nova just barely getting his shoulder off of the mat right there. I thought it was it, but the referee said his shoulder just came up at the count of three. And Ian Frost back in the ring. And Aaron Nova is in trouble here. Big forearms raining down from the much larger man. Dropping an elbow on the lower spine. And that's a lot of weight and a lot of size coming down on your spine, Tony. Most people's spine can't take that. Aranova trying to fight his way up from his back. Doing everything he can to get to his feet. Ian Frost having none of it. But he's learned that if you give him an inch, He's, or let him back in this match at all, it could be to his dismay. And hits him with a snap vertical suplex here in this main event matchup. Double axe handle to the midsection of Aaron Nova. <laughs> Senior referee Ray Riviera, right in position. DWI Academy of Wrestling Science influence all over this match. And Ian Frost has really targeted the spine of Aaron Nova in this matchup. Aaron Nova spinning back kick right to the back of the head. Spinning heel kick to the back of Iceman's head. I don't know what that was or who that was, but it's pandemonium here at the Village Shops in Ruskin, Florida, as Aaron Nova fights his way back to his feet. Off the ropes. Oh my goodness, turns Aaron Nova inside out just when you thought he was coming back. Not today, not today. And he could be unconscious here. Ian Frost just took the captain's head off. 
The unorthodox style of Ian Frost has got him still in this match with an upper hand right now. If he could only shut his mouth and stay on top of Nova, he could literally pull this out. Ian Frost paying way too much attention to the fans here. But he hooks him. Looks like this could be a German suplex. Nova rolling through for that knee bar. Oh my God, this could be it. That is a dangerous submission right in the middle of the ring. You can see how much pain Ian Frost is in. <laughs> Lightning Monroe enjoying the fact that Ian Frost is in this submission. Why now, would he not? He's going to give the match up just to see him suffer. He has nothing to lose in this matchup. The sadisticness of Lightning Monroe punching him right in the face. And Ian Frost is tapped out and your winner of this matchup, the Swagtastic Super Thug, the captain, Aaron Nova. I have no idea why Lightning Monroe would do that, but I tell you what, he handed a victory to Aaron Nova as the Iceman reached for the ropes. Lightning Monroe pulled him away. I think he was a little mad about the breakup of his pin earlier. The collapse of the teamwork. Ian Frost tried to turn against him and it worked against him ultimately. Lightning Monroe costing him the match. Aaron Nova, winner, victor by tap out. Showing us just why he's the captain. Thank you for joining us here, DWI Right Now, episode 46. I'm Alex Green. Anthony Devlin. And don't forget to subscribe, subscribe to our YouTube channel and get your episodes of DWI Right Now first. Anybody interested in learning how to wrestle, check out DWI, Academy of Wrestling Sciences. This guy. Facebook.com slash DWI Wrestling. Guy's a hot mess. He's the winner. He's the best. Save us. No, nothing. Ian, Ian Frost, ladies and gentlemen. Right now. Bye. I will be back.